let's talk about the most sensible and comfortable entry-level sedan to luxury, the Mercedes C-Class. So the car we have with us today is the C200. Now Mercedes has given the C-Class a facelift, but which car today with me is facelifted? Is it the blue or the black? Let me know what you think in the comments below. So were you able to guess which one is facelifted? Let me break it to you, it is the blue one. So today's review is primarily going to be focused on what has changed pre the facelift to post the facelift. And for that, let's begin with talking about what has changed on the outside, so let's talk exteriors. So to keep things simple, I'm going to call the black car the older one and the new one is the blue car. Let's just go color coded because that's going to make things simpler. All right, so first thing, let's look at the grills. What's different here is on the black, you do have chrome strips running along the logo and on the blue, I absolutely dig these galaxy grills. They are so, so, so elegant. Number two, what is different are the bumpers. On the black, you do have the lower lip, which is highlighted in chrome. While over here on the blue, it is way more sportier than before. And thirdly, what's different is going to be the lights. I personally prefer the lights on the black just because I love the way the blinkers are as well as the lights. While on the newer one that is our blue car, it is the new multi-beam LEDs that are here. Coming to the rear, again there isn't much of a difference as you can tell and probably the only evident difference will be able to be seen at night. Why? Because it is in the brake lights. On the black one, there are two LED strips, whereas on the blue one, it is just a single LED strip that looks like a square bracket. Other than that, as a major difference, the only other difference I could probably spot would be in the bumper and the diffuser. In regards to the side, they look absolutely identical. There are zero differences in regards to the side. Now, to sum up the exterior, the car still looks as elegant as it was. So the blue looks just as elegant as the black. Elegance being the key word, it is a head turner, it is always a stunner and that's what the C-Class always has stood for. Alrighty, coming to the interior of the C-Class, it's screaming luxury just because every little thing here is made so well. Talking about the wood accents, the leather, the leather lining everywhere, it is so beautifully done so it literally screams luxury and then again when you look at all of it, it's elegant as well. So. That is the key words here. I would definitely say luxurious and elegant. And let's get into it bit by bit. Alrighty, so getting into the main focus of what the interiors have to offer. Let's begin with how do you even adjust your seat? So Mercedes has it mostly on the side of the door or probably on the side of the seat, depending on what option you've preferred with your car. But in this case, we have it here on the door and it literally is in shape of a seat. So you have the headrest, you have your backrest and you have the seat itself. And if I would like to adjust my seat, all I need to do is adjust it there and this is how my seat would move. So I'm pushing this knob forward and my seat therefore will move forward. So that's number one on how to be adjusting your seat. What else is on the left of my steering would be my light controls and my window controls of course. And in this case, the side mirrors are foldable. So coming to what is different now in the blue car, which is the new one in comparison to the black, number one would be the screen right here. Previously, it used to be a 6-inch screen and now it is a 10.25-inch screen. And secondly is the instrument cluster or the display gauge. It is all digital now in comparison before. It was partially analog and partially digital. So that mainly is the difference. So I'm kind of going to stop talking about our little black car because I believe it's, it's pretty much the same otherwise. So I'm kind of done and dusted with it. We've highlighted the differences on the exterior, highlighted it on the interior. So let's now focus on the new car that we have with us. Coming to the steering wheel, which I absolutely adore just because it is a flat bottom. So I love that sporty feel about the steering wheel. Now getting into what's on the steering, on the left, you have controls that control the screen right in front of me, which is my instrument cluster. And on the right, whatever controls I have is for the screen here, which is my infotainment. Now the track pads that you'd see here might remind you of something called a blackberry which is barely used today but yes these trackpads are from blackberry so it brings back gold memories of good old bbm days anyway getting back into the car we are looking at speed limiter here as well as cruise control on the left and on the right it is infotainment controls now what is fun is the instrumental cluster so let's talk about that so about the instrument cluster on the left is your speedometer on the right the tachometer 
But now what's fun is that I can change the way my tachometer looks and that is by scrolling right over here. So as I do that, that changes as well as now I can control what's on the center screen and that could also be done with this home button here. I get to choose different options such as the trip information, navigation, radio information or even media for that matter. So very interestingly done and I just love the fact that the tachometer can be changed. That is very interesting. Now an interesting thing here too is that I can choose what design of my cluster needs to look like. Currently we're in sports, we have classic and progressive. Coming over to the center, I love this because it's minimal yet screams luxury, yet again. All right, about the screen, 10.2 inches, it is not touch. It needs to be controlled from the controls here, so I would kind of call this the command center. You have a trackpad as well as a little knob that scrolls for you. So that is the key over here. It is not touch, everything needs to be controlled from here. Now, of course, the car will support Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and that could be accessed from right over here. This is where the cup holders are and as well as the charging mat and this can be closed to make it look nice and neat so i love the fact that this area could be shut off now over that we have our climate control which is so simple to use as well as these feel so crisp so it's not loose ugly buttons and not random things to keep touching and pinching etc it is very crisp so this very feel the grip is perfect so i really have zero complaints about anything here the vents face you well, it's, it's planned well, so yes, all in all, really, really well planned. Below that, you do have direct commands in case you don't want to be wasting time scrolling through the commands here. You have navigation, radio, media, and vehicle settings, so these are quick commands rather than scrolling through it. So that's pretty much it with the center. And lastly, of course, is storage compartment, which is pretty deep. So yes, really, really, really good storage. So I believe all in all on this, it's fabulously done. Talking about the back seat, personally, if you are tall, you will not fit in it just because the roof kind of dips. But if you are tall and you're seated in the front seat, definitely there is ample amount of space, ample amount of legroom. But the back seats, yes, they are a little claustrophobic, but then again, it's good enough because this is a small size to dump. All right, so talking all over again about the interiors, it screams luxury as mentioned, but what it really offers is comfort as well. So that is beautiful about this car. So not all luxury gives you comfort because the leather does feel a little uncomfy and all of that, but this has comfort to offer. So that is great. So all in all, absolutely adores the interior. So well done. All right, so let's talk about features. My number one favorite is the panoramic sunroof. Why? Because it's so beautifully done. So it really makes you feel like you're sitting in a convertible, but of course you're not. So that is number one favorite. Number two will be the lights the interior lighting that is your ambience lighting you get a palette of 64 colors to choose from you can adjust brightness level and that's all in your vehicle settings so that really highlights the car especially at night time because you're driving the vibes great so really really great all right moving on to what it has to offer over here is a, is a back shade so you do have that option the button is right here it raises and closes the shade accordingly getting into safety features and features that is specifically for the driver number one would be the fact that the car can park itself and that is with this assist right here so it has self parking assist number two is the cameras it has a bird's eye view four cameras and a 360 view so in regards to that kind of safety absolutely perfect getting into what it has to offer for the driver here it doesn't have adaptive cruise control it just has cruise control it gives you lane departure warning but it just beeps really loud and that, that sometimes can be very annoying but then again it is a warning it has lane keep assist it doesn't push you back into lane just beeps while you're going off your track and what is very important is collision warning not only from the front but also from the sides so if there is something heading your way from the side the car will alert you and it really beeps really loud so in regards to driver safety it's really loud and clear that hey you know what you need to watch out for what's coming your way so wrapping all of that Safety-wise, features-wise, again, fabulous Mercedes. All right, beginning on how do we drive a Mercedes. Now, a lot of people get confused as to how to use this lever because usually you would have a stick shift or a rotary knob or one of those, but in this, it is a lever, lever right by the steering wheel. And how that's worked is that you hit all the way low, which goes to your D, one level up brings you to N and all the way high up brings you to R 
and P is the button right here. So that is how you operate the gearbox. I mean, the gear lever in this case. And an important feature with Mercedes and something that I really, really use a lot myself would be the drive hold. So when I am on D and if I'm not hitting the brake, definitely the car is going to be in motion. But now you have the option of pushing the brake down really hard so it goes into a hold mode. And that, even though if I get my foot off the brake at this point, and even though I'm on D, the car doesn't move. So this is a very helpful feature, especially when you're stuck in traffic, so you don't need to switch into neutral, considering this gets a little complicated. So this is a great feature in, com in comparison to a lot of cars that don't have it. So I think they've done really well with including the holds onto the brake. So before we start driving the car, I do have a little confession to make. The black car that we've been using as our older comparison is personally my car. So I'm very excited to tell you what the newer model has to offer in regards to the drive. So let's buckle up and talk about what this one has to offer in regards to drive all right number one let's start with what the engine is it is a 1.9 liter turbo engine four cylinders and the numbers it has with it is 204 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque that is some serious high torque now what is the difference between this and the older one my baby is number one nine speed auto transmission and it used to be seven speed earlier and what is different is 23 horses more so i can go way away it feels different instantly you can tell that there has been something to this car which is very different from before so number one that is the biggest highlight over here with what is the drive in regards to the feel of the drive always been smooth there is nothing to me personally that can compare the drive of a mercedes to anything else it is flawless seamless whatever awesome adjective you want to insert there you can definitely do that so in regards to drive absolutely smooth luxurious comfort i've been saying this all through the review that it not only offers luxury but it has comfort just associated with it and that is pretty rare to have luxury and comfort go hand in hand together so that is definitely something to highlight here in regards to drive modes it's exactly the same as before starts with individual comfort eco sports and sports plus Needless to say, you'd want to drive in Sports or Sports Plus just for that feel of it being wilder than the car is. It is a mid, it is not even a mid-size sedan, it is a small sedan here. And the fact that you feel as sporty, flat bottom steering wheel, there's so many little highlights and accents that make this car what it is. And that's what I adore. It's not just a boring entry level to luxury, it has things to offer. And the roars, hold up, let me switch from into Sports Plus from Comfort, you can instantly hear the difference in engine and the way it reacts. The faster it is, the torque, everything, you can feel it. The car literally becomes one with you and it just communicates. And that is what makes this drive so damn good. All in all, I would say again, giving the drive a 10 on 10. I This is a daily drive for me. I've been driving the same car for about four years now and the new one, hasn't failed to impress so absolutely well done Mercedes and there there is zero complaints probably actually the only complaint I have with it is the fact that they should have probably added a little more in regards to the modes it being the same probably not as good they could have done something better but other than that fabulously done at the beginning of my review here with the C200 I did mention that the car is sensible and comfortable which it obviously lives up to as you've seen through the review and two more adjectives we've added to that is luxury and elegance. And all four of these together is what defines the C-Class. Today, the car we have with us stands at 220,000 dirhams. Now that might sound expensive, but hey, this is a Mercedes we're talking about and that badge doesn't come cheap. So all in all, it is a fabulous car and I absolutely enjoyed it. Tell me what you think about the car. Please do leave a comment. And as always, thank you so much for watching.